Guys, welcome into Radio Row with USA Today Sports. We are normally on location. We would be in Tampa, but due to COVID and the crazy blizzard that's behind me right now, we decided to keep our talents here in New York. I'm pleased to welcome in Jerome Bettis with us today. Hall of Famer, how are you doing? I am great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yes, we appreciate your time, of course. Uh, so, Jerome, I want to start off just with, I think, the coolest thing. Uh, you're in a new commercial, Frito's Lays commercial. Yeah. Now, Terry Bradshaw was in it, and even though you never got to play with him, you both starred in the ad. Who's a better actor? <laughs> I, you know what? I, I think he is so, uh, his energy is so infectious and, and contagious. I think he's probably the better actor. He's done more. I mean, he actually had a, 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 a motion picture that he starred in. So I, I've got to give him the nod yeah. on that one as well. How was that experience for you? The experience was amazing because, you know, you have to understand coming into this situation, it was so epic because you got these legendary uh, uh, players and this entire group, you know, when you look at them, it's 22 Super Bowl rings among all the guys. Right. And so, it, it was incredible. And then the storylines were, were so much uh, so that you, you wanted to know about it. Like mm -hmm. mine with Terry. And we're talking about the immaculate reception, but in a different way in that is if he were the receiver, how easy would it be? And he says, ah, oh, it'll be so easy. <laughs> so he finds out how easy it would be, right, to, to, to catch the ball so low and things like that. And then uh, you know, uh, to see Troy Aikman interacting with Jay Rice and Joe Montana, wanting to be one of the boys, those kind of things. Eli and Peyton at home, what would they be doing, right? So many so, goats all in one place. It's, yeah, <laughs> it, but it's so many great storylines. And then with the fact that this Super Bowl is going to be probably the most watched Super Bowl, yeah. obviously with the pandemic and not, not, not as many fans there, uh, the snacks are going to be so much more important. So to have, uh, you know, in these spots, the Tostitos and uh, Doritos, the Lays and the, and the uh, Cheetos, it's going to be great because that is going to be front and center at everyone's party when they're, when they're watching and, and looking at the game. That's what they're going to be uh, uh, snacking on. <laughs> And speaking of Super Bowl, you got to let Marine Corps vet James Martin know he was going to this year's Super Bowl in Tampa as an honorary captain and, yeah. and, and being involved in the coin toss. His reaction was speechless. How was that moment for you <laughs> when you were able to surprise him? It, it was a great moment because I got a chance to to interact with someone who has done so much for others, you know, and, and it's you don't get a chance to do that uh, very often. And then to be able to give him uh, the, the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl, that was that was pretty, pretty fun because obviously he's a fan. He's still a fan. And and for him to 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 have that enjoyment, his wife is with them. And yeah. it was just a it was a special moment to have a, have a chance to give him uh, the recognition that he deserves. Yeah. And switching gears to your former team, the current Steelers, they're certainly in a transition time right now. With the way the season ended, they, they lost five of their last six games. In your mind, what went wrong in that last stretch of the season? Well, I thought that the team didn't adapt very well. I thought early in the season, they had a philosophy of getting the ball out of Ben's hands early because they didn't know if his physic if his body could hold up physically, right? But he started, he did, he did extremely well. He threw the ball all over the field and they got it out of his hands. But eventually you got to adjust and adapt. And that's what they weren't able to do. In latter, the latter part of the season, teams started to figure out, hey, we, we don't have to, to really you know, backpedal because they're not stretching the football field. And then once that happened, the adjustment didn't come. And then they became one-dimensional with short passing game. And then late in the season, they tried to throw the football down the field. But it was a, you know one of those too little too late because they didn't have the running game and they weren't that efficient uh, protecting Ben in terms of uh, getting sacked. So it fell apart when it was the makings of a really good year. Both Juju and Chase Claypool are two guys who first pop into my mind on the team who's very active promoting their brand on social media. I know Juju kind of got slack for his TikTok recently, but I want to know how you feel about the, this new generation of players taking their brands to new platforms on social media. You know what? I don't have a problem with it. If it's pre 
And post game, I do not have a problem with it. If it was a pro- if, if if this was happening during the game and they're yeah. in and they're being selfish and they're thinking of themselves and not their teammates, then I would have an issue with it. What he does in pregame is of no consequence to anybody. It's not going to impact the way he's focused in the game or not. So I don't see that as being a big issue. The problem is when when the team started to lose games, people started to look for things to yeah. to really criticize about, and there was no criticism um, warranted in that situation. The guy was just doing a you know two minute thing. That, that was it, and and I think. Once people realized what it was, it wasn't anything harmful. He wasn't doing anything uh, to berate the other team. It, it wasn't anything like that. He was just doing something for his followers. It, not a problem. Big Ben obviously has a big cap hit, and he's shown that he's willing to work it out and play. Do you think he's still the answer at quarterback next year? How do you feel about that? You know what? I, I saw I saw uh, uh, Ben this year, and it wasn't an issue – of, of could he still throw the football down the field? It was, he had a, some accuracy issues and things of that nature. And that tells me, uh, you know, you've got to kind of, when that happens, you've got to go back to your fundamentals. Obviously the big concern was arm strength. Can you throw it? And I think the focus was there as opposed to, you know what, let's get back to basics. You were out a full year. Let's get your fundamentals corrected. And I think that's something that he needs to work on for next year. I think he still can be the answer short term, obviously. But if you if you can work with them, just get the accuracy back. It wasn't it was never an issue of of could he get it to get could he get it to the guys. Just get the accuracy back. Uh, get him feeling good about himself and go out there and, and, and play well and ask Ben to help in the, uh, the maturation process of, yeah. of one of the other guys behind him. I'm glad you brought that up because it's clear Ben is in his twilight and the Steelers haven't really groomed a replacement. If you were yeah. the GM, what would your move be to find Ben's successor? Well, obviously, it would stay on the pack that they that they're on. Uh, you know, they got Haskins there. They have um, uh, I can't think of the other uh, uh, quarterback. Rudolph. He Rudolph. I'm yep. sorry. Yeah, Rudolph. <laughs> he he's there uh, as well. So I would say, okay, we're going to look at these guys, and we're going to probably address something in the draft. Um, I, I don't know where it would be per se, but I want to look at something in the draft because now I want to give. Uh, uh, myself and the opportunity to have that competition and put the best player out there. But I want all of them to have the benefit of having seen Ben Roethlisberger uh, play, how he prepares, how he gets ready uh, on the practice field. I want these guys to all see that, see what a champion looks like at the quarterback position. And then uh, as Ben uh, exit uh, stage left, you bring these guys on and say, listen, it's a competition. The best player is going to be the starter at the beginning of next season. And Jerome, you're in the Hall of Fame. Peyton Manning's time is now. I want to know what's your greatest memory of him on the field and what is his legacy of the game in your mind? Wow. His, his uh, you know, one of the greatest times, um, obviously, was, was always competing against him. Yeah. Uh, he was a great guy. He always was, was, was very accommodating. Um, and gracious, and so even wins and losses, he was—he was, you know, really the same way. I mean, if you, hey, you know, he would always acknowledge, talk to you a little bit, uh, and so he was—he was always great on the field. Uh, but I, I think his legacy is going to be that of a champion who was cerebral. You know, the way he approached the game, he played games with you uh, from the neck up. And uh, a lot of quarterbacks, they play games with you with their arm and they bait you, they move you with their eyes. He, he really did it with his, with his mind. Uh, and so I think he's going to re- be remembered for one of those quarterbacks that was much different than the rest and that how he was able to, from a cerebral standpoint, work his way around the field and be a very, very special quarterback and win championships. Speaking of Manning, I want to backtrack to your 2005 playoff game against the Colts. I'm sure you know where I'm going with this, the tackle. Now, be careful. I am a Colts fan. But looking back. <laughs> what's That's your... why we're going to this question. <laughs> I get it. Exactly. Looking back, what do you remember most about that play, the tackle? <laughs> I, I remember that it was actually an interception. 
Yeah. It wasn't a fumble. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> oh, I saw was... the video. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it was uh it it was it was one of the, the darkest moments for me uh as a as a running back. You get in a position where you can put the game away. I was known as the closer, come in to close the game out on the one yard line. All you gotta do is, is is stick it in and next thing you know, boom, the ball's up in the air and Everything is in slow motion. As I'm going backwards, I see the ball going the other way. Uh, and by the time I get up and, and finally kind of look, I see Ben working his magic. <laughs> and um, he made probably one of the best plays ever mm-hmm. for a quarterback tackling somebody uh, after a turnover. So he gets um, he gets a Christmas presents for me for life. <laughs> I'm sure your your uh your range of emotions you felt from having the ball pop out, watching the Colts take it back, and then Ben making the shoestring tackle. You were probably all over the place. I'm assuming. <laughs> all over the place. Trust me. And when he when he made the tackle, you know it was a sigh of relief, but I knew it wasn't over because yeah. because uh, obviously you had Peyton Manning marching back on the field uh, with a chance to go down there and try to win the football game. So it was uh it was very terrifying, if you will. Fortunately, yeah. it worked out, but. It was, uh, it was nerve-wracking. Yeah. I was going to say, did you have any confidence that Vanderjack was going to make the kick to send the game to OT? I, I, I mean, he was the most <laughs> accurate uh, kicker in the history of the NFL at the time. So I just assumed we were going to go into overtime and we were going to win it in overtime. Yeah. Have you had any conversations with Peyton about that play? Do you give him any grief? No, we haven't. And that's oh, you're crazy too nice. Part. You're too nice. All, all these years we haven't <laughs> talked. We never talked about it. Nothing really to talk about. You know, yep. you don't want to st- stick uh, <laughs> uh, salt in the wound. You just let let it go. You know. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.